Hi, I'm Andrew Pullen, CEO of Spa World, and we get asked a lot about what the best insulation in a spa is. So I thought I'd do a bit of a good, better, best explanation on the various um, types of insulation that can go into a spa. Uh, the better the insulation, the less electricity you will use to keep that spa hot, and therefore the lower running costs. Probably won't be any surprise to you to know that the more you spend on a spa, the better the insulation is going to be and therefore the lower the cost of ownership over the lifetime of the spa is. So we've pulled three spas out of the line in the good, better, best category. We're going to start with the lifestyle mandalay over here and um, we'll, we'll start looking at some pretty basic insulation. Okay, so we're here underneath a lifestyle mandalay spa. Uh, it's an entry level spa uh, made to hit a good price point and has what we would consider the absolute minimum standard of insulation that you'd want to see in a spa. And basically it's right here. So the shell of the spa is insulated with a layer of high density foam. And that's basically it. There's no insulation on the base of the spa. There's no insulation on the inside of the cabinet. It's just this much foam on the uh, shell of the spa itself. So not a high degree of insulation, but typical of what you would find uh, in a entry level spa in this price category. So the next one we're gonna look at is the next level up in insulation in the Vortex Nitro. Let's go and take a look at that. Okay, so now we're underneath a Vortex Nitro spa. Vortex Nitro is probably the biggest selling single model in Australasia. And we've got a whole nother uh, level and layer, excuse the pun of insulation. So not only is the shell of the spa insulated, but we're also seeing a layer of insulation across the base of the spa. And probably most effectively is this layer of insulation around the inside of the cabinet. So it's a foam and foil insulation. It's designed to reflect back heat loss. Uh, basically what happens is as the heat gets lost through the shell of the spa, slowed down by the insulation here, gets reflected back, trapped around the spa itself. So it's kind of like double glazing. It's trapping a layer of warm air around the spa. There's a lot of spas that use this um, twin uh, insulation method in that the shell of the spa is insulated as is the inside of the cabinet. One of the advantages of this type of insulation is that if the spa springs a leak, pretty easy to find because the plumbing itself is, whilst it's sitting in that hot air, it's still out in the open um, to, to see it. So yeah, it's, it's certainly a much better level of insulation than what we would see in the Lifestyle uh, Mandalay that we've just looked at. Uh, and I would say that the running cost of this spa would be roughly half what you would see of the, uh, in the first bar that we looked at. But there is a better form of insulation, and so we're gonna to go to the best next and look at the Jacuzzi full foam system. Okay, so we're now under the Jacuzzi J335, and Jacuzzi features what we call a fully foamed system of insulation. So with the exception of a small pocket here, where the controller and the pumps are mounted, the entire gap between the inside of the cabinet and the, outside, and, and the outside of the shell is filled with foam, hence the term fully foamed. Now, in my experience, I've been in this business for 25 years, I've owned a number of spas, including fully foamed jacuzzis, and I can tell you categorically that the running costs of a fully foamed spa are gonna be lower than any other spa system on the market. You will see many spas claiming multiple layers of insulation. I've seen up to eight layers of insulation talked about before, but nothing surpasses the fully foam system in my opinion. So um, I hope that's been helpful. Uh, quick explanation about the various insulation systems in spas. Come into a Spa World store to hear more about it.